If you've been in PPC for very long, odds are you've heard of Google Ads Quality Score. There are some people who think it is the most important thing in the account and other people who pay very little attention to it. It doesn't matter which camp you're in, it is important for you to know what Quality Score does and how it impacts your campaigns. So in this video, I'm gonna give a high level overview of what Quality Score is, how you can see the different factors that go into what your Quality Score is and how you can start making some adjustments to improve it. I wanna start by giving the definition of Quality Score on Google is an estimate of the quality of your ads, keywords, and landing pages. Higher quality ads can lead to lower prices and better ad position. What Google is trying to do is make sure that we advertisers are creating a good user experience for our end users, which are also Google's end users. Anybody conducting a search, both us advertisers and Google are trying to make a positive impact on. Without those people searching, there's no need for any of us to be doing search advertising, and there's no need for Google to provide a search engine for for us to advertise on. So their experience is a very important factor in making sure that this entire ecosystem works. And Quality Score is the forward-facing kind of advertiser-friendly version of how we're ranking according to some of Google's expectations. You can see here in the second bullet that Quality Score is reported on a one to 10 scale and includes expected click-through rate, ad relevance, and landing page experience. Those are three of the factors that are going into quality score. And we'll talk about each of those here in just a little bit, but those are going to be three really big factors on your quality score in your Google Ads account. The biggest takeaway is that the more relevant your ads and landing pages are to the user, the more likely it is that you'll see higher quality scores. Again, as long as you can continue to be relevant, on topic, and providing a good experience for the user, Google wants to reward that because it's in their best interest to do so. You can see here that Quality Score is an aggregated estimate of your overall performance in ad auctions and is not used at auction time to determine ad rank. This is getting a little bit more in the weeds and I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it, but this is something that I think people get a little bit confused by, so I wanna take a little bit of time to clarify. If you click on the blue link that was in the help section in the previous slide, it'll bring you to this page. It says the one to 10 quality score shown in your account is an aggregated estimate of your overall performance in ad auctions. Therefore, it can't be used at auction time to determine ad rank. Real time auction specific quality calculations of expected click through rate, ad relevance, and landing page experience, among other factors, are used to calculate ad rank at auction time. Taking a step back, what this entire section is trying to tell us is that Google needs to simplify quality score to be able to share with us advertisers. Every time your ad goes into the auction, a new quality score is put together based on all these different factors that Google is talking about. It's going to take into account your expected click-through rate, ad relevance, and landing page experience, but it's also factoring in different layers that we can't see as the advertiser. It's thinking about what types of audiences that user is in, what their past behavior has been, where are they in the world, what device category are they on, how do they normally engage. There are a lot of different factors that go into it, so every single time your ad is eligible for auction, a new quality score is going to be calculated. Now that might not seem like a lot, it might seem like they should be able to give you that data on a real-time basis. Think about the number of impressions you get per day on any eligible keyword. Let's say you get 100 impressions per day. That might not be a lot, but also factor in your impression share. If you're only getting 10% impression share, then there's technically 1,000 times you were entered into the auction and you only just showed up for 100 of them every single one of those thousand instances, you were given a new quality score. That is just unmanageable information, and we're only talking about one keyword with 100 impressions per day. Think about really large accounts. The quality score numbers would just be fluctuating all day and it would never actually stop. So Google uses quality score in a way to aggregate that data to make it user-friendly so we can see where we stand on any given day and make sure that we're able to impact our ads moving forward. I've already mentioned the three ad components that Google calls out specifically and that they provide data for us in the interface. So let's go through each of those a little bit more specifically. The first is ad relevance, and this estimates the relevance quantity and diversity of your ad content. So what this is trying to say is that Google wants your ads to be relevant to the searches, the queries coming through, your keywords, but it also doesn't want you to just keyword stuff. That's where this quantity and diversity of your ad content comes in because in some instances, that ad is not going to provide a lot of content because you're just trying to put in key phrases. It's just as if you were gonna do that for SEO. The next component is expected click-through rate. 
How likely is it that your ads will get clicked when shown for that keyword, regardless of your ads position, extensions, or other formats that may impact the visibility of your ads? What Google is trying to say in a more simplified manner is that they're trying to come up with a predicted click-through rate based on how your ad should be clicked on, regardless of the ad position or any of your ad extensions, anything like that. How frequently will your ad be clicked on each time it enters the auction? Now, there are a few different factors that go into this. Google does look at your individual ad account's performance in the past and that keyword's performance on that particular search query to come up with this expected CTR, but it also takes into account everybody else's ad account that has been bidding on it as well. So depending on how they have done, you're going to be stacked up against how well your competition has been able to generate clicks on these queries as well. The best example I can come up with here to illustrate the very big gap between how just you versus your competition can have an impact on queries is going to be bidding on branded keywords and competition keywords. If you're bidding on your own branded keywords in your account, odds are you have a very high click-through rate because you are the brand the person is searching for. So typically you're going to have a high score when it comes to expected click-through rate. On the flip side, if you were to bid on your competition's keywords, you're probably going to have a much lower click-through rate because you're not the brand that that person searched for. And the expected click-through rate that Google has come up with includes their account performance where they're probably seeing those high 20 to 30% click-through rates on those keywords and you just simply can't compete with that. So almost invariably in brand campaigns and competitor campaigns, you'll see relatively high expected click-through rate quality scores for a specific brand, but you'll see pretty low when it comes to a competition type of campaign where you're bidding on your competitor's keywords. Overall, the main takeaway here is that Google is trying to give you some sort of indicator as to what they expect your click-through rate to be, and you wanna make sure that you are at least hitting that benchmark, if not exceeding it, to make sure that you have a high expected click-through rate quality score. The last component is on landing page relevance. And this is an estimate of how relevant and useful your website's landing page will be to people who click on your ad. Again, both advertisers and Google, it's in our best interest to make sure that whoever comes to our landing page has a good experience. There are a number of factors that Google looks at for your landing page relevance, but I think one misconception is that people assume that Google is going to adapt its SEO technology to review landing pages with the same nitty gritty in-depth look that it does for regular organic listings. And that's just not the case. They're not looking quite as much of your keyword density and a lot of other SEO factors that I don't even know what they are, they're more looking at a very high quick level of how your landing page ties into that specific user's journey. The factors that Google is going to look at to come up with landing page relevance are pretty high level. It's going to make sure that the content is relevant. So yes, it is going to try and make sure that there are some keywords throughout that make sure that they tie back into the user's search intent, as well as some surrounding phrases. But it's kind of just a checkbox to make sure that it's on topic rather than making sure that it's got the highest level of relevancy it possibly can. It's also gonna look at user experience, and this is not going to nitpick based on how your landing page is put together. You're not going to get extra points for having a one-page form versus a two-page form, or being able to buy now on the page as opposed to going through a whole cart process. It's not looking at those types of things. It's more just trying to make sure that your website from a coding perspective is easily readable from the user experience on the other end. Is it full of a ton of huge flash images that are just not conducive to getting information quickly? Or is it pages and pages of just highly dense text? Or is it something that's laid out in such a way that a user could probably read it pretty quickly and get the information that they need? The last component of your landing page experience score is going to be based on how users engage with your landing page. If they conduct a Google search, go to your landing page, and then immediately click back to the search results page, that's going to have a negative impact on your landing page experience score. Google's going to interpret that in one of two ways. Either first, the content on your landing page is not relevant and the user clicked through, saw the landing page, realized it wasn't what they wanted and immediately bounced back to find something else. Or it's going to be something where the user clicked on your ad, the page simply wasn't loading quick enough, they got impatient and went right back to the search results page. Either way, that's a negative factor for Google that your landing page is not delivering the experience that their end user wants because they went right back to the results page to try and get something else. So whether it's based on user experience, the content available, 
page speed, any of those factors, make sure that when users come to your page, they at least spend a little bit of time on it and try to engage with it rather than bouncing right back to the search results page, even if they don't convert. Now that we've gone over these three components, I wanna hop into a Google Ads account and show you how you can see these metrics to make sure that you're not only hitting the quality scores that you want, but you're also trending in the right direction as well. In Google Ads, we'll be able to see the quality score metrics when we're on the Keywords tab within the Google Ads platform. So that's gonna be over here under Search Keywords. To start seeing these metrics, we need to customize our columns by coming here, clicking Modify, and you'll see that there's an entire section dedicated just to quality score. There's a lot of different metrics, but I first wanna start off by just highlighting quality score and showing what that looks like. Now we have quality score over here off to the right, and you can see that we have a score on a one to 10 scale like we talked about just a little bit ago. So some of these keywords have a five, some have a seven, some have a three. So if we wanna start breaking this down and understand why some have certain scores versus others, we can head back into that quality score column section and start to add in specific metrics. So let's go ahead and do that. From this drop down, there are also a few others. So we can see expected click through rate, landing page experience, and ad relevance. We'll get to the others in just a minute. Now that I've added those columns, we can start to see why some keywords have certain quality scores and others have different ones. So for the highest quality scores we have in here, we've got a couple of sevens, and that has an average score for expected click-through rate and landing page experience, and above average for ad relevance. Keyword with a score of five for this account specifically has below average expected click-through rate, but average and above average landing page and ad relevance respectively. And then lastly, the lowest one that we have here is a three, and that has below average for both click-through rate and landing page experience, but ad relevance is still still above average. So you can see that each time we have a new quality score, some of those factors, whether it's click-through rate, landing page experience, or ad relevance, tend to fluctuate. This account obviously is doing very well when it comes to ad relevance. We have no notes when it comes to ad relevance, but there are some instances where we might want to pay attention to expected click-through rate or landing page experience to try to improve those quality scores over time. When it comes to each of these individual scores, average and above average basically means that you're doing well enough that Google is not taking any sort of negative impact on your quality score because of that component. For an above average, you might get a little bit of a boost. Your quality score might be a little bit higher, but effectively getting average in these columns is great. You're really just trying to hit average. It's the below average areas that you would wanna pay attention to. And sometimes they don't always make a lot of sense, which is unfortunate, but that's just the way that it is. As you can see here, I'm still on the three quality score and it has a below average expected click-through rate. But if you come over and look at its click-through rate right now, it's at 40% compared to some of the other keywords that have 19, 28, 11. Some of those have average. This 28 has an average click-through rate, whereas the 11 has below average, but so does this 40%. It's also a much smaller data set. It only has six clicks out of 15 impressions, but you can see the two at the top have a quality score of five, expected click-through rate is below average, but they have 21 and 19% click-through rates. So this is where it gets a little bit tough to try and impact those. You can look at your ad variants and see which ones have higher click-through rates and try and lean into the language that's in those. But again, there are some people who think that quality score is a very important factor. I think that it has some sort of impact, but it's not my main KPI. I might wanna try and get the below average expected click-through rate score up to average, but if the ad variants that have the highest click-through rate don't convert as well as the ones that have the lower ones, I'm not gonna change the language. I wanna make sure that I'm getting conversions because that's what drives performance and revenue for my customers, not what our quality score is and what our click-through rate is. So yes, some of these metrics can be very important and they have an impact on performance, but it doesn't mean that you need to sacrifice all performance to make sure that your quality scores are high. On any given day, Google will tell you the quality score, but it's going to be showing you just the snapshot of the quality score for that day in time. You'll remember when I went into the columns section, there were a few other metrics that were in that quality score area, and those are going to be historical quality score metrics. So let's take a look at those. These are gonna be denoted a little bit different. You can see this is just quality score, and this is quality score H-I-S-T for historical. I'm gonna go ahead and add all these columns in the same order that I added all of the other ones so that we can have these next to each other and compare in the interface. Now you can see that there's an entire second set of quality score metrics. We have quality score, expected CTR, landing page experience, and ad relevance, but now there are also historical columns for each of those as well. Right now, everything says the same thing. 
that the fives are fives, the sevens are sevens, below and average are the same as they are. But historical quality score does something that quality score columns don't do, and that lets you look to see if you are at least trending in the right direction for quality score. So if we wanna come up here, I already have last 30 days selected, so I'm just gonna come up to segment by time, and I'm gonna choose week. Now that we have this segmented out, you can see how quality score basically has blanks for all these different line items for the different weeks, but historical quality score doesn't. It has the different scores that you got for each of these different weeks, which again are aggregated stats, but you can see a trending set of performance over time. Unfortunately, I picked a bad example because none of these keywords change over this period of time, but if they did, let's say that the early portion of February, our keyword here was a quality score of three, and it has since come up to a five as of March 1st. You would see a quality score of three out of 10 for as many weeks as it was a three out of 10, and then it would jump up to a five out of 10. And odds are one of these three different factors would change over here because it would have improved, and that's why the quality score went up. So depending on what type of information you're trying to get out of Google around your quality score, it's important to make sure that you choose either the quality score or historical quality score columns to get the information that you're looking for. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, some people think that quality score is one of the most important portions of your account and other people don't. Odds are you probably got a little bit of a taste for what I feel about it during one of the portions of the video. If you didn't, then great. I stayed relatively neutral, which was my goal for this. I really just wanted to be able to show you where to find the metrics that you need to make sure that you're improving performance over time and you know what aspects of your ads Google thinks you need to improve to perform better. When it comes down to it, the biggest goal that you need to have is to make sure that you're doing what's in the best interest for your account, your client's account, and hopefully that also ties into the best thing in the user's best interest as well, the person actually conducting the search. Any of these different metrics can help you understand how you stack up against Google's expectations of your performance. And also with the historical metrics, you can make sure that you're trending in the right direction as you try and optimize and get better performance out of the platform. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.